Hello everyone and welcome to another anatomy video. This is Dr. Ayan from the Veteran Anatomy channel. Today we will talk about the muscles of the stifle joint in the dog. So let's get started. So the muscles of the stifle joint in the dog includes the popliteal muscle and the quadriceps femoris which has four heads, the lateral vastus, the medial vastus, uh, the intermediate vastus and the rectus femoris or the straight muscles of the thigh. Of course here we should not forget that there are some other muscles acting indirectly on the stifle joint but we will dissect these mentioned muscles in this video. Okay, here and after removing the fascia lata, the tensor muscle of the fascia lata and dissecting the biceps caudally in this uh, case here directly on the femur bone on the femur bone we can see this muscle here in the lateral view we can see just part of this muscle so in general we are talking about the quadriceps femoris from the name the quadriceps femoris has four heads so let's go through them. So we have the lateral vastus muscle. We have on the medial side the medial vastus muscle. Between them we have the intermediate vastus muscle. And finally we have the straight muscle of the thigh or the rectus femoris. So let's look at them. And to be able to see all of them somehow we have to move the hind limb just like this. So this is let's, uh, let's say more a cranial view of the thigh where we can find laterally this big muscle here this is the lateral vastus part or the first head of the uh, the first head of the quadriceps femoris on the medial surface here we have the medial vastus this is the medial vastus look how they are somehow connected to each other so the medial head of the um, uh, of the quadriceps femoris called the medial vastus muscle. Between the medial vastus muscle and the lateral vastus muscle we have the intermediate vastus muscle. It's located just on the bone there. So if you want to see it, so we, we may cut this uh, muscle later, which is the, four, the fourth head of the quadriceps femoris or the rectus femoris or the sweet muscle of the thigh. So let's start with the describing these four heads of the quadriceps femoris laterally again we have the lateral vastus the lateral vastus originate from the um, lateral proximal surface of the humerus so let me show you the bone so if we put the bone just like this you will find that the lateral vastus originate exactly from this area of the femur bone lateral proximal surface here and inserts to the patella inserts to the patella this is the lateral vastus from the um, lateral proximal surface of the femur bone here to the patella the lateral vastus why the medial vastus on the other side let me just move it to the side and I'm, I'm moving also the bone with it like this so the medial vastus which you can see here here is uh, originates from the medial surface of uh, the femur bone here proximally here and inserts also to the patella inserts also to the patella so the medial vastus which we can see here okay the third muscle which is located just between the lateral vastus and the medial vastus and located actually just on the bone like this originate from the cranial dorsal or prox cranial proximal surface of the femur bone in this area here and inserts also on the patella the last head of the quadriceps femoris which is the rectus femoris which i'm holding here in my and originate actually from the rectus tuberosity rectus tuberosity this small tuberosity found just in front of the acetabulum in this area here and inserts also to the patella to the patella called the rectus femoris or the straight muscle of the thigh 
So as we described, all four heads moves together and inserts on the tibia, uh, on the patella, and from the patella toward the tibia, here we can find the patellar ligament, patella ligament. So, so finally, the forehead of the quadriceps humorous are inserted to the tibial tuberosity. And from the origin insertion, you can find that the main function of the quadriceps humorous is to extend the stifle joint. To extend like this, so contraction of the muscle will move the stifle joint like this. Extension of the stifle joint, and if you consider the rectus, femor, uh, rectus femoris from the pelvis, in this case, contraction of this muscle will flex, flex the hip joint. So rectus femoris is a flexor of the hip joint, and all foreheads are extensors of the stifle joint. This muscle, this important muscle, is innervated by the uh, by the by the femoral nerve. Where to find the femoral nerve? The femoral nerve uh, um, moves normally in all animals between two muscles called the psoas major and the iliac muscle. The psoas major and the iliac muscle in the dog are fused together to form this uh, nice muscle here called the iliopsoas muscle. The iliopsoas muscle, but at the same time, the nerve will stay inside this muscle. So this is the iliopsoas muscle. The iliopsoas muscle, of course, originate part of it from the ilium bone and part from the ventral surface of the uh, lumbar vertebra and serves to the lesser trochanter of the femur bone where the lesser trochanter if we put the bone like this so this muscle inserts to the lesser trochanter here of the femur bone okay as i said before if you want to see the femoral nerve in this case in the dog you have to cut the muscle in the middle directly in the middle here and after that you will find how the femoral nerve is located just inside this muscle this is the femoral nerve. So this is here, the femoral nerve. The femoral nerve moves out of the muscle. Uh, this level here gives another small branch called uh, the saphenous nerve. So this is the saphenous nerve. The saphenous nerve, as you can see here, moves down uh, following or running next to the um, femoral artery and femoral vein so this is the femoral artery and the femoral vein is next to it so they move together here in the same area the saphenous nerve is responsible for the innervation of some muscles in this area and the skin up to the manus why the femoral nerve as you can see this one here it gi gives final branches directly to the foreheads of the quadriceps femoris here if you look exactly so it gives final branches to all of these foreheads and is responsible of course for the innervation of this muscle there are some clinical cases why where this uh, nerve is damaged for example on the way or even if there is any disc at the level of the origin of this nerve which will cause like a paralysis of the quadriceps femoris and of course one of the function again of the quadriceps femoris is to extend the stifle joint but mainly for the fixation of the stifle joint and that's why the dog cannot in this case move correctly if the nerve is paralyzed so the femoral nerve gives here the saphenous nerve which moves next to the femoral artery and femoral vein up to the mouse there this is the innervation of the quadriceps femurs. So here, I would like, if you want to see the intermediate vastus muscle of the quadriceps femurs, which is located between the lateral vastus and the medial vastus, in this case, the best way is to cut the rectus femurs here in the middle. Once we cut the rectus femurs here in the middle and move it up and down, as you can see here, we can see the 
intermediate vastus located directly on the cranial surface of the femur bone so if we move uh, the muscle to the side here we can see the cranial surface of the femur bone here so again after cutting the rectus femoris and moving up so here we can see the other three heads of the quadriceps femoris including the lateral vastus on the lateral side the medial vastus on the medial side and the intermediate vastus just between the both vastus muscles intermediate vastus So let's move to the medial view here because I would like to start with this muscle here. Let me just put it this way. This is the bobliteus muscle. The bobliteus muscle originate from the bobliteal fossa, that fossa which we can see on the lateral uh, condyle of the femur bone, this area here. This is the bobliteal fossa. And uh, this popliteal muscle moves, the tendon of it moves caudally and inserts to the proximal medial surface of the tibia. So here we can see the insertion area of the popliteal muscle. The popliteal muscle is innervated by the tibial nerve the tibial nerve it's a branch from the sciatic nerve uh, we talked about it before the tibial nerve moves between the two heads of the gastrocnemius and here deeply it gives a lot of branches to all of the muscles in the caudal group so the popliteus muscle is innervated by the tibial nerve the function of this muscle is to rotate to rotate the lower leg you know somehow medially medially this way and at the same time it's actually um, somehow a flexor of the knee joint Mm-hmm.